Biology is one of, if not the longest course on the entire Leaving Cert syllabus. We have 38 topics and 23 experiments. And myself and yourself, we are gonna go through it in 29 sessions. Now, a lot of people take biology, let's just call it a spade a spade because I think it's the easiest of the sciences. In 2019, which is the results we have now, biology of the three sciences had the least amount of H1s at 7.7%. In fact, the majority of people in biology got a H4 or below. And the reason for that is simple. Those students do not know how to get marks and do not have a study plan and strategy. They end up becoming experts in biology, which this is not. I'm David Lewis. I'm head of biology here at the Dublin Academy of Education. And I'm not here to teach you biology. I'm here to teach you how to become an expert in the biology exam. I'm really, really, I'm really excited about today's session because I get to distill everything and all our methods that we have learned over the last decade from successful students down into one session for you. I'm going to try to bring as much value as possible. And when I was planning out this session, I set out with three goals in mind and have them up here on the board. I want you to leave this session with three ideas. I want you to turn off this monitor and walk away to wherever you're going to go with three ideas. I want you to know how you get marks and how you optimize for these marks. I want you to know a course breakdown and you have a personal strategy of how to efficiently and effectively side through those 38 topics and know where you are going next with your study. And I'm gonna do, do this through a topic of photosynthesis. I wanna show you how every single topic in biology is the exact same. Every single topic is the exact same. Now, I know some of us are in different, different areas here in the sense that maybe some of you guys missed out a little bit in fifth year or, fifth year or you perceive you did, or maybe like ask yourself, why are you watching this video? Maybe you wanna get, uh, maybe you wanna get a head start for sixth year, which is like, I congratulate you on. That is absolutely, that's fantastic. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Maybe, I don't know, maybe your parents are there behind you. They're making you watch this video and your, your hand in your eyelid like that. I, I'm not too sure, or, or maybe just, so I, I, I don't know but no matter what there's one reason the one overarching reason why we are here watching this video and it's because of this is because well from when I'm shooting it and around I suppose around 300 days from now depending on when you're when you're watching it on Tuesday the 8th of June you have to sit a three-hour exam in biology okay this course is 100% exam based let's just get this out of the way for the moment and let's we'll come back to it you are getting nothing for your experiment write up. And I'll talk about that again in the future. You have to prepare yourself to perform on the day of this exam, to answer exam questions. Okay, you have to take wherever you are, and I'm gonna help you with this, and you have to say to yourself, right, I need to get here. I need to get towards where my actual goal is in terms of a grade. Now, what's gonna happen in sixth year is an absolute myriad of things between different subjects, between pressure from other people, between, I don't know, people misinformed ideas from your mates and, you know, uh, random questions in books and all this sort of stuff is an experiments. It's going to try to plug you out of where you want to go. You just have to keep working on moving yourself along this line to here. And here is where you're going to perform on the day of the exam. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Okay. If you look behind me, I came in, as I said, it's a very long course. I came in yesterday and spent about eight hours writing these topics on the board here, obviously almost. Um, and I'm going to say, first of all, uh, this is all in your notes. This stuff I'm going to go through here is in your notes, but I really want you to get a scale of it uh, to begin with. The Leaving Cert Biology course is broken up into three units. Three units. You can see here, one, two, three. Well, glad I, glad I signed up for this video. If you look at the three units, one of them massively stands out. I should do anyway, unit one. Unit one is really, 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 really small. In fact, unit one is so small uh, because realistically, that's not a full chapter. That's not a chapter. We'll read that together and we'll get the knowledge from that in around 17 seconds. Okay, unit one is food and ecology. Now, before I show you why that's massively important, I just want to be fully clear. In your normal day school, 
they have to teach you to be a well-rounded biology student under the department of education's umbrella they have to teach you and get you to interact in many many different things a crazy amount of which in leaving cert biology are not examinable they are not examinable okay and, and i feel that's what really holds a lot of students back they are not sure between questions in the book mock questions what their teacher is into and telling them about random homework assignments write up of experiments they are not sure how to perform on this day and this exam and that is a massive problem and that results in a lot of disappointment throughout the country you'll see every single year when people actually get their results in biology They're like oh, i thought i would have done and the reason is because they don't have a unique strategy to set themselves up to perform on this day now i know this is ages away for you but if that's our goal this is goal oriented learning this is exam focused uh, prep this again this is not the best i'm not going to teach you the best biology in fact this course was made in 2001 first came out in 2003 first rolled out then this biology some of the stuff we're going to teach you is actually a little bit out of date and it's not going to be the same as home ec and chemistry students are going to laugh at our stuff that doesn't matter that doesn't matter okay we just have to write down squiggles on a piece of paper on this day and someone else is going to tick and go they're the appropriate squiggles and give you points because nate make no mistake about it the leaving cert is a game everything about it is a game for you to get points i personally do not care if the day after the biology exam you forget everything i ever taught you as long as you are happy with your result and i'm going to show i'm I'm going to show you today. I hope I hope I'm going to shock you about how that result, even if I don't know you, I don't like I don't know you at all. How you that you are capable of any result? You are capable of doing extremely well on this exam. And we're going to take a little bit of time to, I suppose, sharpen our axe here a little bit and set out our stall and set out a plan to save us an incredible amount of time and stress in the future. So bear with me on this before we get into the photosynthesis. This is the most important thing I'm going to show you. The exam itself, the layout, and if you haven't seen it yet, you have to look at the exam. I'm, I'm always shocked that people aren't taught this. I'm shocked. So it's fantastic that you're here. If you take anything, it's this. There's three sections on the exam. People call them this, but I, I, wouldn't, I don't really call it this, and you'll see why at the end of class. People call that the short questions, section A, and people call that the long questions. As an examiner, I'm only looking for key points. That is it. Never in an exam do you have to write an essay, do you have to write paragraphs and stuff? So why would you do that in your homework and in your preparation? It's simply, it's just silly. And we're gonna focus from day one, from today, on leaving certain exam questions, because simply that is what we're gonna be asked here. There is no better test than looking at that. If you look at section A, there's six questions. And those six questions are broken up like this. Two of those questions come from unit one, Two of those questions come from unit two, and two of those questions come from unit three. Okay, how this works is you have to answer five of those six questions at 20 marks each. So five out of six at 20 marks, which gives you 100 marks in total, which means what? Which means what? That's one quarter of your entire exam. Okay, perfect. Now, I'll explain a little bit more about that in one second. Section B, is the experiments. Now on your course there are 23 official experiments. In our notes I've broken them down a little bit more just because one is massively important into 25 and then in a distilled handout I've broken them down to 10. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. But there's 23 experiments here. These questions can be asked on any of those 23. It is extremely, extremely easy for me every single year to give you seven or eight of those experiments to focus on and be 100% confident and able to sleep at night that you'll be able to get 100% on these. Okay, why is that? Because it's literally my job to look at the patterns and tell you what, what I think is gonna come up and tell you why. You could do this work as well if you had the time, but you have six or, or seven subjects. So when, you're, when we are closer to the exam, I'll give you eight of those to focus on. The great thing about that is three questions come up, seven, eight, and nine, each worth 30 marks. You only have to answer two out of the three, two out of three questions. So even if one goes a little bit wrong for you, 
you still have you know 60 marks in the bag uh, so two you have to answer two out of three for a total of 60 marks none of my students should be aiming none of my students should be aiming for less than 53 52 marks in that with relative ease by the way and i don't mean that to put pressure on you over here section c then we've got we've got questions and they're broken up a little bit differently one of those questions comes from unit one so the the long questions they call them but only because they're worth 60 marks each but they're all still looking for short key point answers one question from unit one two questions from unit two and then three questions from unit three now some of you guys might have spotted this already some of you guys might have spotted this already but you see unit one there you see unit one here okay if we decide to pick those questions which we probably almost definitely will depending on your exam strategy that is 2 by 20 is 40 plus 60 100 marks out of a total of 400 marks so if we go back to this board here with all the different sections on it what i'm saying to you is that if you focus on these two here that is 25 percent of your grade 25 percent of your grade not too bad and we even break that down further as you'll see into different headings make it really really easy for you with this handout here you will have broken down exactly what the examiner wants you to answer in terms of experiments and if you then go even further with this and add the 60 marks from over there when we study unit one plus the experiments that passes us the exam that passes us the exam so knowing that from the outset you suddenly have a massive base in your exam if you spend a couple of hours going and i mean a couple of hours if you study it in the right way going and studying those those, uh, those topics there you will pass any leaving cert and then it's a case over the next you know 250 uh, 300 days of topping up your, your result the percentage a day and i'll show you exactly how to do that but i think it's massively important to start off early looking at that there now you would have got a, a set of the notes online this is actually a, a set of notes specifically for this course here but all our notes are similar to this in that we break down exactly what you need to know we ask ourselves certain questions at the start which tell us are these important which chapter is important which one isn't which one is less important we fit it into our study plan and actually we build then throughout the year a, a resource of around 24 pages which the entire course is the entire course can fit down into these 24 pages so when you come to the day of this exam here what you can say to yourself like the day before or a couple of days before is instead of looking at the book going back to chapter one the cell or even the scientific method and trying to read through it and what did he say about that and then my other teacher said this and all this no you have this resource here which tells you absolutely everything and it's invaluable absolutely invaluable anyway let's get into it here because you want to you want to see a little bit of biology so here, here's our notes here here's our table of contents for this handout here it tells you as you can see there about the biology course uh, it tells you um about the experiments the different ones there so you can tick them off as you go along but as i said you you do get a handout on that and um, it tells you it shows you the exam focus just so shows you what i've written on the board here is on page six and then this is probably the greatest invention i've ever had is the study plan and I've made a little pyramid here of what I feel is most important and next and next and next and next. So if you are banking on stuff just to look at, that's the way I would do it. With all these different topics, it can become quite daunting because the way they're taught in schools and in chapters is that there's this chapter and it's completely separate to this chapter, completely separate to this chapter. By your leaving cert, you're gonna be bored at how much repetition there is. I want you to be bored answering the questions so you don't even have to think. The way I break it down is we've got unit one and then we've got a, a, what I call unit 2A, which is this to here, unit 2B, then we've got unit 3A, 3B and 3C, which is human biology. You can see this human biology here is a lot of chapters. We're going to leave that to the end and give us options on that. So it will give us actual options, as you can see from our study pyramid there. 
Now, the great thing about having that study pyramid and knowing about how the exam is laid out is you can start to focus, well, one, on chapters that are more important and you get more bang for your buck in it and more of a return and better better scores in your in your exams and your mocks and then ultimately your leaving cert. But I know there's some chapters on the board here that some of you guys don't like. Maybe plant reproduction, maybe genetic crosses is one you don't like. You can simply leave it out. For your leaving cert, you can leave it out. I can show you strategies that you don't have to, if you don't want to, look at every single one of those and still get 100% in your exam. Okay, so let's actually get into it here. So because, again, this is... This is uh, a, the strategy of like successful students taken from other, from other students and just repurposed. So what they do naturally, I can just show you the strategy and it will work for absolutely anyone. These principles that have worked for our school for 10 years, I guarantee you can work, can work for you. If you look here on page 7, we have unit 2 because photosynthesis is in unit 2. I've plotted out how much marks each chapter has been worth in unit 2 since the dawn of time, which we went back to 2005. Uh, and that allows you to start to see, okay, what ones are a little bit more important. It shows you how these unit two questions appear. But then on page eight, we're gonna start off with photosynthesis. So a lot of you guys would have seen photosynthesis in fifth year. And the reason I've selected photosynthesis to go through is so I can keep saying photosynthesis again and again and again, or realistically to show you something that you probably think is quite difficult. And, it's, and show you that it actually isn't, as long as you go about it in an exam-focused manner. I know the part you don't like about photosynthesis. I know it. it like, think about it now. If you remember it, if you've done it, what is it? Pathways, isn't it? It's electron pathways. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a method here now in a second that allows you to get full marks on absolutely any question, knowing only a couple of points. On page 8... Let's, let's finally get into it. After all that, I, I, thanks for being patient there. I, I promise you that will stand to you. On page eight, photosynthesis. We've got to ask ourselves three questions at the start of any chapter. Any chapter. How often does it appear? How much is it worth? And when did it last appear? So with photosynthesis here, it's appeared 14 out of 15 years. There's one year where it wasn't on the course. And the way we study actually the photosynthesis appears has appeared every single year because what we are going to learn today will not only help us in photosynthesis questions it will help us throughout the entire course everything to do with plants even other things as well how many marks is it worth well 24 marks to 60 so just to give you a bit of a bit of an idea 20 marks in your exam is five percent 30 marks is seven and a half percent because you can see that in questions for section a and c 60 marks is 15%. So this class itself may be worth in your leaving cert 15%, maybe. And then I have headings. And you're probably start, starting to think to yourself, what, what do you mean headings? Well, what we are going to do is we're going to work to build the ultimate study sheet ever on every single topic. We're going to build these ultimate study sheets. And they're based around these headings. And I haven't taken the headings from just absolutely nowhere. These are the styles of questions that the examiner asks. These are the styles of the questions the ex that the examiner asks. Okay, so these are headings we need to know. That is way easier to remember than entire essays about stuff, and that is way more apl applicable towards the exam. Okay, cool. On page nine, let's get into it. What is photosynthesis? So we, we have all our ideas down there. What I would do if I were you is I'd have another sheet of paper or at least a pen in my hand here and write all over this sheet. Every single word that comes out of my mouth is based towards you getting a better result. So please take anything I say down. Okay, photosynthesis, what is it? It's the production of food from inorganic materials using light energy trapped by chlor chlorophyll. Now that is a definition. But I want to break it down a little bit. I want to break it down. Photosynthesis. What does photo mean? Well, photo is a word we're going to see time and time again on the course. It means light. Anything with photo means light. Synthesis means to make. So photosynthesis is the making of food using light. So the making of food using light. So photosynthesis. Grant. And it says... Production of food from inorganic materials using light energy trapped by chlorophyll. Now, chlorophyll, if you'd like to write this in, is inside a chloroplast. 
So if I drew this stuff on the board here, if I drew this and I drew this, I'm fairly sure that almost straight away you would react and know, even though I haven't drawn it and I've drawn a circle and a really botched up rectangle here, you would say that's a plant cell, that's an animal cell. Okay, I'm fairly sure you would say that. Now, in a plant cell, we know a number of things. A plant cell has, well, what makes it different to an animal cell is it has a cell wall, grand. It has a nucleus just like an animal cell. It has mitochondria just like an animal cell. But it also has a chloroplast. David, that's a, that's a triangle. I know. This is not an art exam. As long as you label your piece, that is now a chloroplast. Photosynthesis occurs inside the chloroplast. And what I always think to myself is chlorophyll and chloroplast. A lot of people get those mixed up. Chlorophyll fills the chloroplast. Okay, perfect. Now in that diagram there, it explains the whole process of photosynthesis. What happens is the plant takes water from the ground, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, it takes in sunlight or any type of light, and then it basically breathes out oxygen, which is great for us, and it says sugars there, but I want you to write something beside that. I want you to write C6H12O6. C6H12O6. What that is, is glucose. Some of you guys might remember if you've done food in fifth year, but don't worry, every single topic we will cover in this 29 sessions together. In fact, by, by the 18th class, we'll be able to do a full leave insert paper. Okay, if you study this way. But in food, when we go ahead and see it, we will see that C6H12O6, that is what's known as a monosaccharide. And that's a type of carbohydrate, which is different to the way you learn them at junior cert. And there's a few discrepancies in that. But you will also notice, look, there's twice as much hydrogen as there is oxygen. Twice as much hydrogen as, as there is oxygen. Okay, what a basically a plant can do is a plant is what's known as an autotroph. And being an autotroph, it can automatically make its own food. Okay, you are a heterotroph. Okay, so no matter what stuff you see on, on random National Ge Geographic TV shows, a human cannot photosynthesize, okay? A human can't. So you are a heterotroph. You have to get food from outside you. A plant can make its own food. Okay, now, in terms of the questions the examiner asks, first one is they might ask you about the role of photosynthesis. And most people get one. But they might ask you for two, or they might give you one and ask you for two more. So we'll write that in here. So the role of photosynthesis, there's three of them. Role number one is it provides plants with food, okay? So one provides plants with food, so plant food. Two, it provides animals with food, or humans or anything, because we eat that. So animal food, without photosynthesis we wouldn't survive. And three, it provides oxygen for aerobic respiration. Respiration, a fantastic chapter. Okay, there's two types of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic means with oxygen, anaerobic means without oxygen. Anything with an or a in front of it means without. Okay, so the three roles, plant food, animal food, oxygen for respiration. Okay, not that bad. Great. As you'll see down there, underneath, we've got the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Chemical equation. This is not chemistry. We don't have to know any of the chemistry stuff that's in your book. We don't have to know how to balance equations. We need to know the photosynthesis equation and the respiration equation, which are actually the same, just turned the other way around. If they ask you for the chemical equation, you have to use the chemicals. Otherwise, you're okay with the words. Now, the way I remember it is it's all the sixes. So for photosynthesis, the actual chemical equation is 6CO2. So that's six carbon dioxides. 6CO2 plus 6H2O. So that's water, which it gets from the soil. Really big on our course. Not big for today, where we get that from and where, what, it, what it does too much going up through the plant. But 6H2O. Okay. Fantastic. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. 
Okay, so 6 CO2 plus, now I can't even open the marker, but I can definitely get an A1 in bio. <laughs> okay, great, so plus 6 H2O. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? I'll say that frustrates a few people, I'm very, very sorry. 6 CO2 plus 6 uh, H2O, and then you see this arrow. Above this arrow, you see sunlight and chlorophyll, so they have to be present. Okay, but they're not included actually in the, in the equation themselves. They actually go up top almost like enzymes. I'll, I'll write them up in a different color now in a sec. Gives us this glucose, C6H12O6 plus 6O2, so six oxygens. Great. Now, I suggest you know that if it comes up, that's going to be worth six marks. More on marks and how they're awarded later on. Okay, cool. So that was pretty easy. Grand. Okay, where does photosynthesis take place? Well, on the next page, if you look where photosynthesis takes place, it says in the chloroplast, like we said, uh, like we said a second ago. However, we talk about it needing chlorophyll, chlorophyll, okay? So in the chloroplast. Now, that diagram of a chloroplast, don't learn a diagram unless I tell you to. Your books are absolutely littered, filled with diagrams. And it's very hard to distinguish from a student's point of view which one is on the actual syllabus for the exam and which isn't. Unless I tell you to learn it, don't learn it. The reason I have that picture of the chloroplast there is to show you, okay, it's got these little stacks on the inside, don't worry about their name, but it also has a membrane, a membrane. So this is probably something you might wanna write down here, as a membrane. And the reason that is important is because throughout the course, littered in five separate topics, we have the idea of something either being prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Prokaryotic or eukaryotic. You are eukaryotic because inside your cells you have a nucleus and membrane bound organelles. So organelles with a membrane that have a, a membrane around the outside. The membrane bound organelles we speak about on Leaving Cert Biology are mitochondria where respiration occurs and chloroplasts, which we don't have. But it's important to note that plants are eukaryotic. The example of a prokaryotic thing that we speak about, which doesn't have a nucleus and doesn't have membrane bound organelles, is a bacteria. More on that later, more on that later on. It's important to know it has a membrane. Okay, why would it have a membrane? Well, the same reason your cell has a membrane. It controls what enters and exits the cell. So if photosynthesis is going to occur inside this, things are going to have to go in and things are going to have to come out. Okay, now, this general overview question. This is, I think, a nice little hack for you that a lot of people aren't aware of. The general overview question can get you out of a lot of trouble. Because remember the part you don't like about photosynthesis? Let's not talk about it unless they specifically ask us about it. So having prepared this general overview question will allow us to get full marks on a question. So what does it mean? Well, we're just gonna go through what, what happens here. And I've put dashes in here, one, two, three, four, five. I'd probably suggest maybe just put in numbers. However, even if they're, the reason they're dashes, because even if this isn't in order and you have the amount of key points they're looking for, you will get full marks. So for this general overview question, first of all, we have the chlorophyll absorbs light. Okay, so chlorophyll absorbs light, handy enough. Okay, two, photolysis. Let me explain what that is. Photolysis. Okay, well, David, we've seen the word photo before. Okay, lysis is another word that we will see again and again and again, and it means split, it means splitting up. So photolysis is actually the splitting up of water. And again, I'm no chemistry teacher, absolutely not. Okay, I don't really know that much about chemistry at all, which does not matter. This splits up into three things. It splits up into protons, and that's how we write them in Leaving Cert Biology, electrons, and that's how we write them in Leaving Cert Biology, and oxygen. So that water is split up into three things. If, if you guys have done respiration, you would know it actually goes the other way in respiration, that we breathe out water and they combine together. Protons, electrons, and, uh, and oxygen. These two 
are going to be massively important later on. And I think it's a nice time here just to talk a little bit about oxygen. The examiner can ask you two, or basically one question on it, and they can ask you, say, say two fates of oxygen, name two fates of oxygen, or what happens oxygen. There's two things. One is handy enough, it's released into the atmosphere. Okay, so released into the atmosphere. And we can use it for respiration then. But two, and not a lot of people know this, and it's very, very, very important you know this, this can fill a number, uh, plug a number of gaps for you. It, it's also kept for respiration. So remember we spoke about, we spoke about respiration earlier. What respiration is in your body is, for the most part, we speak about respiration being food, plus oxygen in our body gives us energy. A plant, while it can make its own food, it doesn't mean it has energy. The same way if you go to base pizza and you buy a pizza, you don't ultimately have energy. Now you might be excited, but you don't have energy yet and you don't get energy by getting that pizza and like rubbing it all over your body. You have to eat it, digest it, go to the muscle cell that needs it or whatever cell needs it, and then respiration has to occur to produce this thing ATP, which gives us energy. So it's the same here. A plant, even though it can make its own food, needs to respire, and it does. So some of the oxygen is kept for respiration. Okay, perfect. So we've got chlorophyll, photolysis, where water is split into one, two, three things. Step number three, as you can see here, sunlight energizes electrons. Okay, so I'm gonna just write down here, Electrons are energized. Well, how? Don't care. But they put in my book, don't care. Leave us your exam, doesn't matter. Grant? Plants absorb carbon dioxide. Now, that's actually a big part of our course later on. But it's not that big a deal here. We're just going to talk about it taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Fine? And then it says the energy combines protons, electrons, and carbon dioxide to form glucose. So this is the whole, this is the whole kind of combination here, the, the crux of it, I guess. What actually happens is those protons from up there, so those protons, the electrons from there, and the carbon dioxide that has just got absorbed turns into glucose. And that's it. That's our general overview question. So unless they ask you something in detail, do not go into detail. We've got our role and we've got our general overview. Perfect, unreal, five steps and you only even need five steps. Oh my God, that is so crooked. That's a bit upsetting, isn't it? But it gives us a nice opportunity to, to recap that again. So we've got, what happens here? Well, chlorophyll absorbs light, that light it does, allows for photolysis to occur, splitting water into three things. Those two things, as I said, are going to be used later. Oxygen gets released into the atmosphere or kept for respiration. The electrons become energized, great. Plants absorb carbon dioxide and the protons plus the electrons plus the carbon dioxide gives us glucose, C6H12O6. Great. Cool. Now, if you turn over the page, I have a couple of notes here. Kind of extender questions the examiner has asked and ones they might ask. They might ask you about oxygen, and we've already mentioned that, the two fates of that, atmosphere, are used for aerobic respiration. But they might ask you about carbon dioxide as well. So they might ask you something about the source of carbon dioxide. Right now, you, me, everybody you know is excreting. I know that sounds a bit off, doesn't it? But when you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide and water vapor. Because carbon dioxide and water vapor are waste products of respiration. Grant. Now a plant can get carbon dioxide from the atmosphere around us here, or it can actually get it as a waste product of its own respiration. The other idea is, if you were, to, if say you had a greenhouse and you were growing tomatoes or something like that, and you wanted to increase the rate of photosynthesis, 
So there was more growth in the plant because it had more food, so it would have more tomatoes. What you can do is you can actually burn a fossil fuel because burning a fossil fuel produces carbon dioxide, so it will give the plant more carbon dioxide for more photosynthesis. Okay, and that's just what's mentioned there. Now, there's a couple of other diagrams there that might help you out. You might see a, a, a little summary diagram down there which helps us out. It actually uses a pond plant, which more on that later. And on the left-hand side, it talks about water. All we need to know to answer these questions for now, don't worry about anything else, is water is absorbed from the soil. Water comes from the soil. Okay, perfect. So that, that's, good. that's that sort of stuff there. Now we're going to get into a, a little bit of what I call a more detailed study. And it just means we're going to go over the same stuff again in a little bit more detail because the examiner might ask you a question on part of that stuff. But we're not really going to learn anything new. 